When I, 26 female, was two, my parents had another child who we shall call Emma. Emma was a smart, disciplined, and very kind person. She's my family's favorite. I come from a very rich and known family in China. We have several companies and properties, so that's why everything she wants is always given, while I had to do extra chores just to get an extra allowance. When I was 14, I was given a red pocket for CNY. Emma also got one. When we opened it, Emma received a bunch of red bills. If I remember correctly, she got 12 red bills, signifying they want her to have a prosperous new year and hope that money will never be a problem for her. While I got only six red bills, I cried saying it's not fair. As punishment for my tantrums, my parents took my red pocket and told me to go to my room. I remember being comforted by Emma and she even offered to split it in half, but I declined and told her to leave. It's been that way since. Every Chinese New Year, Emma always receives 12 items, such as gold and money, and even receiving blessings and praises from the elders, while I, the eldest, always got smaller amounts, and as I grow older, I received a smaller amount due to their excuse that I'm getting old. Anyways, two years ago for the Chinese New Year, my family went all out for the Chinese New Year, even as far as to give all the employees a red pocket that is very thick. When my grandfather started giving every grandchild their red pocket, everyone but my sister got one. It was suspicious, but I didn't care. My grandfather called for Emma and told her to take this. He handed her an envelope, and when she read the contents of the envelope, she started celebrating. Turns out, she received 12% of one of the companies my family owned. I was mad. It was not fair. For context, in order for me to receive extra money for my school, I started working at the company. I learned everything that needed to be learned. I started projects that benefited the company. I did everything to boost the sales, yet all my efforts were not rewarded. Instead, they gave Emma the rewards I deserved. I saw red that day. I lashed out at everyone, questioning why I didn't receive the shares, that it was not fair, and Emma didn't deserve the shares. My emotional outburst was met with criticism. My father got up and slapped me and told me I was an ungrateful child and screamed at me to get out of his house, as he does not want an ungrateful child to stay at his house anymore. So I left. I didn't even pack. I just left and drove off. Two years had passed, and I moved to another country. I didn't contact any of them, nor did they contact me. I didn't bother to find out what happened after I left. All I know is they basically disowned me. It was ridiculous to disown me just because I lashed out at them. Anyway, on February 2nd, my father emailed me asking for my attendance at the Chinese New Year at their house. When I read the email, I cried. There was nothing else, just asking for my attendance, not even telling me they were sorry. I had a mental breakdown that day and even took a two-day leave at the company I currently work for. I didn't respond, and now three weeks later, I received another email asking me to visit China to spend some time with them, even offering to pay for my tickets and allowance. I'm hesitant to reply, but I want to go back to China and spend time with my gong gong should I go back. Edit Explanation My family is very strict, so my emotional outburst was seen as a defiance. Question How would you know that they hated you? Answer My father fired me after I left and banned me from stepping foot at the mansion and the companies we owned. I was also not allowed to visit any properties. My mother told her friends that she wished she'd never gave birth to such a defiant child. I cried at her words, because how could a mother wish her child did not exist? My brother blocked me on his social media account, but I saw his final post before blocking me. It said, do not contact my name. She is not our family anymore. We have no more ties with her. Emma was also mad because she thinks I looked down at her. My aunts, uncles, and cousins decided to not talk to me. So basically I was excommunicated. Update. My father responded to my email, saying he contacted me because he missed me, and he was apologetic for how he treated me and wanted to reconcile. I sent another email with a link to video call and told them to call me at 2 p.m. Chinese time. In the call were my mother, father, brother, Emma, and my grandparents from the paternal side. We gave each other basic greetings and talked about what was happening in China and my life here. But I got tired of small talk. So, I started asking why my efforts were never rewarded and why they were always strict with me. And I got the answer of, in our culture, that being born in the year of the dragon was a lucky thing. It means you will be blessed and always dominant whatever field you work in. 
Emma was born in the year 2000. So that's why my paternal family saw it as an auspicious blessing and decided Emma should be around the company more, as she may bring more blessings. It basically explained why she always receives 12 items, why I only get what they give me. I never fully hated Emma, but I will admit that there is a feeling that will sometimes arise when I feel that they prioritize her again. As for me, it was not planned back then. My parents only wanted a single child, a boy. I was born three years after my brother, and although they cared for me, my parents had a hard time loving me as they saw me as an extra child. I asked them why they had Emma, and they answered that Emma was going to bring blessings to our family. And I broke down and screamed that it was not fair, that I was their child too. My mother and father broke down, saying they were sorry, and if they could turn back time, they would love me more. They said it broke their hearts to see one of their children grow without them overseeing my progress. They regretted not being at my piano recital and not being there when I graduated from high school. I cried and said it's not fair that I didn't get a happy childhood. And basically at that point, everyone started crying. I asked why did they not reward my efforts at the company, and my grandfather admitted that his views were outdated and he did not want me to get any position at the company, but he apologized saying he broke my heart with his actions and told me if I move back there, he'll give me the position of director. I know what you are thinking, the company is going down, that's why they want me back. But nope, the company is still strong and provides a stable income. The call lasted for one hour, and basically we talked about the family, how my life here is. I even told them that I went to the Taylor Swift concert in Australia. My parents were happy that I was happy, so they offered to buy me floor tickets at Taylor's concert in Singapore. My mom told me that Gong Gong misses me and come visit him in Shanghai. She even told me she'd pay for my tickets in hotel just to visit them. I accepted the offer. I know, how could I just forgive them like that? But honestly, I miss my family, especially Gong Gong. So I'll be flying back at the end of February. So I'll give an update once I get back. OP's family went so far as to disown OP publicly and on social media. They treated OP horribly and showed obvious favoritism. I think OP needs to protect her newfound peace. They only contacted OP now because they want something from her and not because they miss her and want forgiveness. People don't change overnight, so there's definitely something they need from OP. Well, let's hear the community's opinion and then let's go to the update. Present Background 56 says, I'm sorry that you've been treated this way. Clearly, you deserve much better from family. I'd guess that they want something from you that only you can provide, related to finances, medical, health perhaps. These people have already shown you who they are. Nothing has changed. If they want to see you for you, then they can come to visit or agree to a neutral location. If you're curious but want to protect yourself, suggest a virtual meetup. They'll make it happen if they want it badly enough. Old Meal 2640 says, Do not go back. They want something from you. You have moved on from that life, so stay moved on for your own sake. Queen Legola says, Don't go back. They probably want something from you. Organ or Emma can't have kids and want you to be a surrogate. Someone is ill and they need you to be a live-in maid. It could be anything. Block them all. None of them deserve you. Don't tell them where you are, what you do, nothing. Could be someone is terminally ill and they expect you to forgive them and emotionally blackmail you. Update 2. I met up with my family at a hotel in Guangzhou and we had a heartfelt talk. I tried not to speak with my parents and siblings, but they kept asking me things about my life abroad and what I work as. My aunt may have seen my discomfort, so she told them to let me eat first. I admit it was quite awkward since, to me, the pain of rejection and betrayal is still fresh. When we were done eating, we started having a conversation. My aunt encouraged me to speak my heart out and tell all the wrongdoings that were done to me. After I was done, I was tearing up. Luckily, we were in a private room, so I cried my heart out that night. My cousins comforted me and fed me mooncakes. The night ended with all of us crying. Overall, we had a slight reconciliation. They asked if I wanted to go back home, but I declined, saying I had a plane to catch up to. They were shocked, thinking I was already going back abroad but I said I was just visiting Gong Gong. My mother told me to postpone the flight so our entire family could visit Gong Gong. I agreed, so I canceled my flight. I booked a hotel as I didn't want to be back in the place where I was humiliated and betrayed. I spent the remaining time with Gong Gong, which was two weeks. But during our tea, he gave me a folder and told me to open it 
and I got the surprise of my life. It was a legal document that contains half of the company my Gong Gong owned. He told me that life keeps screwing me over. It's not accurate, but it's what I interpreted as. He told me I deserve all the success I achieve, and he is giving me full control over the company he owns once he passes, or when I'm ready. I cried, and my family was happy for me, and overall I finally felt that I'm needed and appreciated. Anyways, the entire trip was too long for me to share everything that happened, so I'm only writing the important events. Thank you for all your support and kind messages. It helped me see the bigger picture and guided me to make the right path. Bevnit says, I smell a rat. There's something going on with the business or company that you're not aware of. I cannot believe that in just two years, your whole family had a change of heart after going to the extent of disowning you. I think you need to find out what is actually happening in your company. What has prompted them to give you ownership of half the company? To me, it seems like a trap. Trick Delivery 4609 says, I'm worried about you. Either the family knows you are inheriting half of the business, and that's why they are being nice all of a sudden. Or worse, you're being given a bad business with lots of debt. Check in with a lawyer or PI. Take everything they say with a grain of salt. My brother-in-law's ex is pregnant, and because he left her, she's being anything but a mature adult about this situation. For starters, she's refusing to have any sort of communication with him because she's bitter he dumped her and is jealous he's moved on. Despite the fact that she's refused to accept his money, she's more than willing to take thousands of pounds from his parents and grandmother. This is the first grandchild, so my in-laws want to be part of the pregnancy, and since she was having some complications, they're anxious and ask her for updates on the baby frequently. His grandmother also loves her because she basically watched her grow up, so even though the ex is being spiteful and petty, she'll defend her and act like she's doing nothing wrong. I've known this was going on for a few months now, but I didn't say anything to my brother-in-law at first because my husband was convinced they'll get back together eventually. However, he started dating my best friend and they're serious about each other, so I confided the situation to her and she asked me to tell him since it would be better coming from me than her. The ex has also taken thousands from my in-laws and this is definitely going to continue once the baby is born. I don't want her to continue taking advantage of them, especially my grandmother-in-law who is the sweetest woman on the planet. So I told him and he confronted her. So now she's gone low contact with my in-laws who are devastated because now they'll know nothing about the baby. They're also stressing over how she's going to look after herself and the baby, even though she's a grown woman and it's not our family's responsibility to take care of her. My brother-in-law has also repeatedly offered to help her, but she keeps turning her nose at him, so clearly she doesn't need help that much and was just using this as a way to turn his family against him. My in-laws have been less welcoming towards me since this all went down, and my husband's grandmother asked him if one of us had said something to my brother-in-law. She said she was disappointed in me when she told her he thought it was me, so now I feel bad. My husband also doesn't think I should have told him because he thinks my brother-in-law's ego is hurt because she was willing to accept money from his family and not him. I think he's wrong though, since he's been wrong about a lot of things when it comes to the dynamic between them. Am I the a-hole? I really don't understand OP's motive for inserting herself into this situation. OP's in-laws are grown people who can decide for themselves who to have contact with and who they'd like to financially support. The ex is not being childish for accepting help for her child. It is understandable that she is angry and bitter after being dumped pregnant by her boyfriend. Who wouldn't be? I'm sure OP would be as well. OP should try a little empathy here. One day she could find herself in the same position. Although it doesn't seem as if she has endeared herself much to her boyfriend's family and would have their support. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Spare Article 396 says, You should have minded your own business. Seems like you had to stick your beak in this because he's dating your friend. You're the a-hole and a busybody. Archetyping 101 says, Yes, you're the a-hole. The ex will always be a part of this family because she's the mother of the child. So just because she wants no relationship with the ex right now while she's pregnant, she's choosing to be in touch with the baby's grandparents and great-grandma. You made it seem like she's charging them for access, which is not the case. They are offering help because it's their grandchild. The great-grandma of that kid is now disappointed. You don't think grown adults can choose how to spend their time and money?
that they're not capable of maintaining a relationship of their choosing with the parent of their grandbaby and great-grandbaby. Pillow Princess 222 says, You're the a-hole. You never once describe why the ex is bitter. Your brother-in-law got with another girl while he literally got a baby cooking in another woman's body. And here you are calling her bitter. You and your brother-in-law are horrible people, and I hope she gets all the support from the actual good people in the family.